Merry Christmas again. You know, all throughout Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. and Maryland and many other places, by the way, in the world, there's a scene that's going to play out tomorrow morning, both for the young and the young at heart. And it's going to go like this. Someone's going to go and they're going to open a gift. And there's going to be that sort of wow, captivating moment. You know what I'm talking about? That sort of thing? That sort of gift that all of a sudden even stops a teenager in, in their steps. Like, say, a phone. Nothing quite captivates us anymore like a phone. Or maybe somebody, somebody will, uh, in the middle of this thing, will have someone at their house and they'll get down on one knee and they'll offer them a token of their affection. They will give them a, a Browns football and say, this is the best thing I can... <laughs> Maybe a ring or something like that. It'll captivate them. Maybe um, some of you have already been captivated. How many here know what Fortnite is? Yeah, where's Max? Max, are you here? Max, uh, Max, would you please demonstrate for us what we have to see everywhere we go? This, by the way, is called flossing. Max, go right ahead. There you go. Max, am I even... I'm gonna break a hip, bro. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. That was good. That, that, you wanna stay? You can, you can stay if you want. Sure. All right, so here are my notes. Now nah, you gotta go back with your mom. Thanks, buddy. It's already captivated them, right? We know what that's like. And, and my hope and my desire for you, whether it's a Browns football, whether it's a ring, whether it is a phone, whether it's Fortnite, you know, the advanced edition or whatever it might be, that you will have this amazing, captivating moment at some point tomorrow. But, and you know there was a but coming, right? I will have to tell you that at some point, as amazing, as captivating as that jewelry or football or whatever it might be that you're gonna get, eventually, that what is going to captivate you tomorrow, whether it's the day after or many days after, it will eventually wear off. Now, I'm not saying that to be sort of the Grinch. It's just the reality. You say, how do I know that? Because History tells me that. History tells you that. And I began to think about history and some of the things that we were so captivated over the last 30 or 40 years. Here's an example. People would pay hundreds upon hundreds of dollars <laughs> and stand in line for the ugliest little baby you have ever seen. <laughs> right? All right? Some of you here, let, let's say, how many here owned and still own a Cabbage Patch Kid? Right? Yeah. You're still holding on to it because you believe it's gonna have some value later on. I know, right? That was one of them. Or here, here's another one. Uh, this, by the way, is, is Nintendo Game Boy. Yeah. Remember how awesome it was to be on a black and white screen with two buttons, you know? I mean, we, we thought that was pretty amazing. Here's another one. This came much after uh, Cabbage Patch Kids, but uh, there were parents literally knocking other parents over in Walmart, which is usually just called Friday. But nonetheless, in Walmart for this what? Remember, Tickle Me Elmo. You know, I, we had one in our house. We got one for our kids. How many people? Tickle Me Elmo. A few of you, right? And some of you are like, I'm embarrassed. I, I can't say that. Right. Even the greatest gifts, they, uh, they sort of wear off. And there's probably no greater example of that reality that happened in the year 1980. Some of you remember that like it's yesterday. Some of you are like, what year is that? But in 1980, there was this thing that came out called a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> the biggest reaction I'm gonna get all day. Remember these things? There's basically three types of people when it came to this. First, there are those of you out there that were determined, right? And you were determined. This is pre-YouTube, you couldn't cheat. You couldn't go find someone else to do it, but you figured out how to do this. How many of you? Just come on, brag about yourself just for a second. Yeah, some of you, liars. Anyway, uh, because you were so determined, what they did was is they took a three by three and made it a four by four. Now they have that, right? But eventually, here's what we know. Once you figured it out, the mystery was gone. You moved on to different things. There's another group of us. I've kind of fell in this group. I was called the disillusioned kid. I think the most I ever got was like two sides and I felt really accomplished by it. But then I was very attracted by this thing that came out called the Rubik Smasher. I don't know if you ever saw that. But basically some guy just invented a big wooden paddle and he'd sell it to you for 10 bucks just to beat the living junk out of this. 
And then when you beat the living junk out of it, you could put it back together and pretend like you solved it. How many of you broke your Rubik's Cube apart and pretended like you solved it? Yeah. You were disillusioned like me. Now, there's the third group. There's determined people, the disillusioned people. And then there's just flat out those of us who are just easily distracted. Because as great as this was, we would do it for a while. And then, oh, we'd see something else that'd be more shiny. And we'd go over and we'd do that, right? We'd move on to whatever the next, next bigger or better thing is. Why do I say that? Because whether it's, you know, a Rubik's Cube or whether it's a Cabbage Patch Kid or it's a Game Boy or whether it's a, a football or a piece of jewelry or whatever it may be. History tells us is a very common arc. And it goes like this. Excitement, normalization, boredom. You know what I'm saying? Remember that first car that you got? Excitement, normalization, boredom. And then what did you want? Another new car. Pastor Fred, I'm so proud of you. You've gone several, several years now without a new car. I believe, Jeanette, this should be the year you should allow him to get his new car, just, just for the record. She says no, and I go with her. So anyway... But that's what happens, right? Excitement, normalization, boredom. And it stops captivating us anymore. But I want to tell you, there's only one gift, and it's not a thing. It's a person that can constantly captivate our lives. His name is Jesus. That's what we celebrate in this Christmas season. And so... He is the gift that continually never stops. This is, it's the symbol of what we have, the nativity, right back here. It's the story that we know. It's a story that maybe you'll read tomorrow. It's a story that we read this morning in our house as we kind of celebrate a day early. But it's a story that's told in Luke chapter 2, and it goes like this. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was actually the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. Why? Because he belonged to the house in the line of David. So he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the story of the first advent, the first coming. Many of you know this is a, called an advent candle, and right in the middle is what's known as the Christ candle. This white candle symbolizes Jesus Christ and his coming. But we read from Luke chapter 2. And it's what, I'm, by the way, I imagine that most of us know and understand. But what I think sometimes is the danger is, especially because this probably isn't your first Christmas Eve service. It may be your 101st, 31st, or maybe just a few. But we kind of know it, the story. But what happens oftentimes is this, is that the Christmas morning captivation, the story of Luke chapter 2 kind of stops there. But it doesn't really stop with a Christmas morning captivation. It continues to an Easter morning salvation. See, what do you mean by that? See, the truth of why Jesus came wasn't just necessarily be born in Bethlehem to have moments like this where we can gather around and celebrate as great that they are, but he came with a purpose much greater than being born. He came with a purpose to save us. This is the truth of Easter Sunday. It's the truth of a verse that you've most likely heard. If you've watched uh, any football games at all, there's usually somebody holding a sign, and on it, it says, J-N period 316, John 316. This is what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave, he, he sent Jesus, his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The story of Christmas is the story of Jesus interjecting himself into our life because the situation that we find ourselves wasn't one that was unbelievably happy. But what Jesus did was this. He came to this earth. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a spotless, sinless life for 33 some odd years. And then because he loved us, he paid the penalty for our sin and went to the cross on that day we call Good Friday. And he died, but he didn't stay dead and buried. Rather, on Resurrection Sunday, he rose again victorious over sin, death, and the grave. So that all of us 
who would believe upon what Jesus has done for us, we can be people who don't have to live in a way without hope or joy or peace or love. And I, I think maybe even we know that, but the problem comes in this way. I, I just wanna say this. When we take a look and we kind of begin to develop this sort of Rubik's Cube mentality toward life, we're kind of the determined people, the disillusioned people, or maybe we're the distracted person. By that, I just mean this, that some of us have just determined, I don't need or want anything or anyone else. I'm gonna do this on my own. Others of us have fallen in this disillusion category because as, as we look through this last year, we wouldn't say it's gone overtly well. We don't like it. We, we, we maybe even begin to say, oh, I don't know what I even think about this Jesus. And others of us, we start out really well, but um, we get distracted by our jobs or life or family or whatever, maybe, maybe not bad things, just not necessarily Jesus in that way. And what happens is, is we begin to live our lives in certain ways and all of a sudden we discover that we are no longer captivated by Jesus, but rather we're captured by different things. Things that are, are okay, are, are good, they're kind of like Rubik's cubes, but eventually they're, they're not gonna last. Yet, what we understand is this, is that when we truly get the story of Jesus, what is represented on this candle is this, that we get him, but also what he brings. If you've ever seen one of these before, you know that there's four candles around that represents what Jesus brings. Things like hope and love, peace, and yes, the idea of joy in our life. This is the story of Christmas. It isn't just about Jesus coming so that we can be saved. And yes, that is the most important thing. But it's also so that in this life right now, we can still be people who have hope and have peace and have joy and have love. The continual things that he can bring in our life, despite the fact that life often challenges that. I want to read you a few things. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 about hope. He said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Anybody out here weary and burdened? Anybody need some rest? There's hope from Jesus. Jesus said this about peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. I don't give that type of peace that, that goes away. I give you peace that's also that's not based upon circumstances. That even in the midst of the difficulty of this life, we can still have peace. That's what he tells us here. He says joy. He said in, in John chapter 17, I say the things that I say so that they may have, us who listen, the full measure of my joy within them. The reality of it was, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is in life, we were never made to be people who live constantly like Eeyore. Now, that doesn't mean we fake it till we make it like Tigger. But the reality is we can have joy, which isn't always about happiness, joy no matter the circumstances. Because of the love that God has for God so loved the world. God gave us a gift that is Jesus. And what we read in Luke chapter two is the beginning of the fulfillment of that gift is that he came to this earth so that he could save us and so that for all of us who believe on him can have that captivating moment. And that goes for each of us, even the ones of us that would describe ourselves as unbelievably determined. We're gonna do it on our own. We can make it on our own. Jesus says, you don't have to, I can help you. For those of you who find yourself disillusioned, I have to tell you this, there's a lot of difficult things that have happened in our world just in 2018. That's not new information to anyone in this room. You're like, I'm so glad I came to this Christmas service. I'm leaving so encouraged. <laughs> But the only thing worse would be to lie to you and to make you act like the things around you and the things that have happened have been great and wonderful. They haven't necessarily been that, but even in the midst of all of that, we don't have to be disillusioned because of Jesus, because he came, he lived, and he died, and he promised, even in the midst of the difficulty, he's going to fulfill some peace in our life, some hope in our life, and our joy in our life, and our love in our life. It may not come in our time frame, but it will come. Or maybe the distracted. This is your reminder that 
nothing in life can compare to Jesus. I mean, they can keep your attention for a little while. Whether it's an actual game or whether it's a job or whether it's a relationship other than Jesus. It could be many, many things. But, but none of them will stay. There, there is no tickle me Elmo. There is no cabbage patch kid. There is no Game Boy. There is no Rubik's Cube. There is no football. There is no jewelry. There is no phone in life that compares to the captivating gift that's Jesus. The one who offers himself as a gift for you and for me. And so tonight, on this night, my hope and my prayer for you is that you will have that amazing moment. But that amazing moment won't just stop right here or tomorrow when you open a gift, but it'll continue because you've been captivated by the truth of who Jesus is. God, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the gift that he is. And thank you for your love, your peace, and your hope, and your joy. In Jesus' name.